I got one. What's up, everybody? Uh, Brad here again with a review of the NVIDIA Titan V. This is the top dog. This is the, the king wolf, the alpha male, the whatever you want to call it in the graphics card industry. The Titan V is it. I uh, want to give a quick shout out to Ryan, Ryan at PC Perspective. He actually had one of these. If I spent $3,000 on a graphics card, my wife would probably kill me, but Ryan had one. Uh, I'll link to his stuff below. Go check him out because he does a very good and very in-depth review of this beastly card, and he's letting me borrow it so I could play with it and do a little bit of PUBG, a little bit of gaming, because people are wondering, at $3,000, is this a good graphics card for gaming? And the answer is yes but not really. Let me kind of explain here. Let's let's just jump through a, f a couple of the high specs here. Uh, CUDA cores, 5,120. Uh, not a big surprise there. Tensor Core is where the big news kind of is here, folks. At 640 Tensor Cores, when comparing it to, let's say, the Titan XP or the GTX Titan X, they didn't have any, which kind of tells you, hey, this thing is geared towards machine learning, which I fully agree at $3,000. Even a gaming enthusiast is not going to shell out that kind of money for the performance you're going to get here in gaming. Keep in mind that this is very early on in the card uh, life cycle. We're, we're going to be seeing driver updates. We're going to be seeing all sorts of updates to this card that is going to make it improve better. But NVIDIA is not saying, hey, go buy this thing so you can play 4K gaming. They're saying, go buy this thing so you can do machine learning faster, uh, get your AI a little bit better, your machine learning a little bit stronger, whatever you, you, know, whatever you want to use to describe it. 12 gigs of VRAM, uh, 4.5 megabytes of L2 cache. That's actually a freaking lot. Uh, and then, you know, the tensor performance is at 110, 110 T-flops, and the single precision is 13.8 T-flops with double precision at 6.9. So this is, this is a big card. This is a big card in terms of performance. That is not a surprise. This is, I'm going to say $3,000 many, many times here. But let's take a little uh, slow look here at the card. And it is, yes, it is actually a little bit kind of a silver goldish color. It's kind of hard to describe, but you can see that is on a white desk and a white background. And that is a true color uh, representation of what the card looks like. Very much a blower design. No big surprise here. That's how all these Titan cards look like. And standard power setup. Nothing really too fancy on the back. Just your basic black NVIDIA Titan V that we've seen, uh, you know, on most of the Titan cards. And it's, this looks like from a, if you didn't know, that you'd be like, oh, that's just a standard Titan, except that it's, well, now the latest edition, and it's running on the Volta architecture, which I think is going to be kind of a hint at what's to come here. And like I said, of course, it's a blower design, which means it's going to be a little bit louder than you, uh, than you might get on an internal only card that has the fans like from EVGA or the, or the likes. So here are some benchmarks. The biggest kind of notable update you can kind of see here is actually in that time spot in the top left at 10,065. And then you can see there, I also have the 1080 Ti Founders Edition and also the 980 Ti for the win edition from EVGA. Now, if you look at like the rise of the Tomb Raider and Ashes, uh, that is on the left side of the graph, it is in 4K. And on the right side, it's in 1440. And you can see that, yes, the, the Titan V does perform better than the 1080 Ti. And it should because it's, depending on the configuration, about $2,200 more expensive. Roughly speaking, if you can get a 1080 Ti for about 800 bucks or so, which you totally can do now. And so, yeah, it, it, the performance is better, but it's not, it's not so much better that you're like, oh man, it's doubling up a 1080 Ti. It's definitely not. And then everyone was asking about PUBG. I always get a little nervous about doing PUBG because one, it just hit 1.0 and everybody knows that game is seriously unoptimized. Uh, the best review of 2017, it's a, it's a challenging for the person and for the PC, meaning that, hey, it's a great game. It's very challenging. And your PC will also struggle to run it no matter the specs. But you can see with a Titan V at 4K in everything in Ultra, you can get over you know, averaging between 70 and 80 frames per second, which is very good. But when you look at the 1080 Ti, you're not giving up all that much. And then you could save 2,200 bucks or put that into a, a better CPU, faster RAM, faster storage, all that good stuff. And then of course, at the 1440, you're getting a much better frame rate. But again, it, the trade-off here, folks, isn't massive. And that's, I don't blame Nvidia. I don't blame anybody. This is a card that's not designed for gaming. But if you want the best gaming card, this is it. I mean, th there's no question. This is a card for somebody who says, you know what, money is not a problem. And if that's your thing, go buy like three or four of these things and slap them into a rig. But for the average person, not even the average, even the gaming enthusiast, this is not the card for you. This is for the card where money is no object because the performance is out of control, but it's also $3,000. You can build a very nice, a very, very nice gaming rig with monitors, full setup and everything 
and make this card or make a computer that will run and you'll get 60 frames per second at 4K. So this card is for somebody who wants their machine learning to just be kick ass. They want the best performance because their boss is yelling at them and they, you know, it's corporate money because who cares? It's corporate money. Let's just spend everything we can. So kind of the review here, folks, is that, yes, this is the, this is a look at the future, I think, is the better way to describe it. On the Volta architecture, which uh, the current, I believe, is running on the 10, the 1000 series is running on the Pascal, like the 1080, uh, 1070, 1060, those kind of things. And so Volta is the next generation that we believe that the, what will be uh, likely the 1150, 1160, 1170, 1180, 1180Ti uh, will be based off of. And so this is, you know, they start at the top and now they're going to scale things back and then I don't know exactly when. Some people are saying maybe as early this year. I, that seems a little early for me personally. But then again, that very well could come out. Of course, like the 1180 Ti typically lags uh, quite a bit behind the announcements of like the, say, the 1180. But Volta is appearing what's going to be next. This, this announcement surprised everybody. I was actually uh, at the Snapdragon event a few weeks ago when this thing was announced. So coming back, I kind of had to get brought up to speed about it. And speedy this thing is. It really is good. The question is... I've said this already, but, you know, people tend to jump to the end of the reviews. Should you buy this thing? Absolutely not. If you are sitting in your house thinking, God, I play PUBG all the time. Should I buy a Titan V? Don't. Like, it's not worth it. it first off, it's so early that the optimizations for even gaming at this point uh, are not there. We're early driver days. This thing is just fresh out of the gate. And this is NVIDIA making a really big statement against uh, AMD, who's been pushing out some cards. And they want to, you know, solidify their position at the top of the market. I wonder if we're going to see a bunch of this stuff at CES. You know, there's there's always custom high-end fancy rigs. I'll be at CES, by the way. If you're going to be there, let me know. But this is this is the card. I mean, th this is the one. From noise output, it's exactly like any other blower card from t NVIDIA. I, do, I personally do not like blower cards. Th that's just a personal thing. I like the... Uh, Actually, EVGA makes a nice hybrid one. I'm a big fan of this. I like quieter cards or just the fans on the side that keep the heat internal. I know people are going to say, but yeah, but you get the heat out. It's better. But it's the, the trade-off for me is that noise is not great. So I don't prefer blower cards. But again, this is this is the Mac Daddy when it comes to the Titan V. Or the, when it comes to the Titan V. When it comes to the graphics card industry. NVIDIA has once again sent the benchmark. And really what this card is doing is getting me super amped for the next generation. The next refresh of the NVIDIA GTX series. Because it, it's a trickle down world for NVIDIA. And oh my god guys. Like 21.1 billion transistors on this thing. That is insane. Uh, for a little bit of perspective here. The Titan XP had 12 billion. And the GTX Titan X on the Maxwell architecture had, what did it have? 8 billion. 21.1 billion transistors. I'm, I'm very afraid to like even drop this thing because Ryan would be super pissed at me. Um, but don't worry, Ryan, I haven't dropped it yet. Yet. So, uh, guys, what you need to know about the Titan V. Awesome. It, it's excellent performance in gaming. Yes, you can put it in your gaming rig and get superior performance to the 1080 Ti. No, you should not because it costs too much money. The value is not there. This is not a value proposition. This is for somebody who drives a Bugatti on the weekend um, because their Mercedes uh, and Ferraris are all at their other houses type scenario. And so uh, this is the Bugatti Chiron or Chiron of graphics card it's the top end it's the top dog it's just not all that practical for everything else so uh with that guys uh you can scroll down below and get at my full review and as always appreciate you guys tuning in and we'll catch you right back here next time with the next tech toy